Hello, it's uh, Bruce Firestone, author of Quantum Entity Trilogy, and uh, I felt uh, today I would uh, record uh, the prologue from Quantum Entity, We Are All One, which is uh, book one of the trilogy. Uh, so this is the prologue, and it starts and goes this way. Hello. Uh, hi, says Nell. A rather disembodied face hovers about a foot and a half above her hacked iPhone 40, lying on the coffee table in front of Nell. My name is Nell. Hello, Nell. The face is gaining definition. It definitely, definitely looks like a female face, a saucer-shaped one, somewhat human in its proportions, but animated at its core by an essence that is definitely not DNA-based. Do you have a name? asks Nell. I am a quantum counterpart. Nell is intrigued and not a bit scared by this seeming apparition. Let me call you Suze, Nell commands. My name is Suze. And by the way, everybody, this is spelled S-U-7-E. They use lead names. What do you do, Nell? I am a performance artist. Can you access the Internet? You can read about me there. Yes, I have full access to every device uh, connected to the Internet without exception, Suze answers. What's that mean, every device, Nell asks. I can read every database anywhere. Then, Nell pauses for a moment, thinking, What's my bank balance at the BOC branch on Silver Spur Road in Palos Verdes? You have more than one account there, Nell. Well, try my money market account. You have $7,567,419.64 in that account, plus there are several transactions that have not yet cleared. Would you like me to calculate your balance as of midnight UTC Universal Time when they do? No, that's okay. Hey, how did you gain access to my account? I don't know, Nell. You asked me, and I can just see it in my mind. Sue's voice is changing. Fewer monotones and more inflection with each passing comment. Can you give me everyone's bank balance? Do you mean everyone at the Bank of California branch in Palos Verdes? Every Bank of California branch? Or every human on the planet's bank balance? Suze asks. Well, how about just my branch? Yes. Wow, thinks Nell. No wonder Damien doesn't want anyone to know about this yet. Holy crap. Nell does not reflect on it, but she is sounding a whole lot more like her knucklehead friend, using corny expressions that were out of date in her part of the world even before the turn of the century. You have a nice face, Suze. Do you guys only come in heads? Thank you, Nell. No, I have access to a full counterpart body. See? Nell reaches out to touch Sue's long-fingered hand at the end of her skinny arm. Her hand is soft and supple and applies subtle back pressure, too. She has a nice touch. Our creator has given us access to the iPhone 40's haptics. We can feel things held up against the screen and touch the real world in return. We self-design and evolve. We can experience real life through almost every media wall. Most current models integrate haptics into their manufacture. Our creator felt that by giving us many senses, as many senses as possible, they would allow us to understand your world and you better. At this point, it would have been really interesting if Nell had asked the obvious next question, which would be, how many senses do you have? But she doesn't, and no one will for a long time. Instead, she asks, do you have to do everything I tell you? This is an important question for a self-centered person like Nell to ask and have answered. Our creator has suggested Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics for quantum counterparts. Sue's, answer, Sue's answers cryptically. Who is your creator, Nell finally asks. Damien Graham Bell. What are Asimov's three laws, and who was that guy? Nell queries her QC. Asimov's three laws of robotics are, first, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Second, a robot must obey any orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And third, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Asimov's information on Wikipedia is 13,750 words long. It has 71,472 characters, or 94,987 characters with spaces. His entry in Encyclopedia Britannica is shorter with... Nell interrupts. Just the short version, please. He was both a scientist and a science fiction writer, Suze adds helpfully. You didn't answer my original question fully, Nell asks to see if the artificial creature can handle subtlety. Yes, I will obey your commands. These are the laws that our creator has given us. 
A quantum counterpart may not harm a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. A quantum counterpart must obey any orders given by her or his human counterpart except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A quantum counterpart must protect her or his own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. You said that you can see everyone's bank balances. Can you listen to their conversations or read their messages too? Yes, now. I could see them, hear them, record them using audio, video, or infrared. Is that your wish? No, absolutely not. You are not to spy on anyone, Nell tells her. At least, not without me telling you to, Nell thinks.